Evening, good evening. Shiloh Baptist Church of Landover. Good evening, guests, visitors, and friends. Welcome to our midweek service. We are so glad that you are here joining us for our virtual midweek worship experience. Join me in the live chat with other officers, our Shiloh disciples, and our guest visitors and friends for greetings to our pastor and also just letting us know something that God has brought you through this week thus far. We are so glad that you are here to join us yet again for another midweek service. The Lord is truly in the blessing business and he keeps on blessing us. If you need prayer or you know someone who need prayer, our spiritual support at Shiloh Baptist Church is amazing. Our officers, our deacons, our ministers are awaiting to assist you in your prayer and spiritual counseling, spiritual guidance, or just someone that you just need to talk to. We have been in this pandemic for the last two years, and we all know that prayer changes things. God is still here helping and strengthening us. Please fill out our spiritual support form on our Shiloh website. You can also add your prayer request and your email address in our live chat. Here at this time, we ask that you will support our ministries here at Shiloh. The Bible tells us to give and it shall be given back to us, pressed down, shaken together and running over all in good measures. If you would like to support our ministries here at Shiloh, View our four ways of giving on your screen. You can visit our website at shilohbc.org forward slash give. You can send a text to the number on the screen. You can mail your gifts to the address on the screen. At that selected date, at that selected time, stop by the church to drop off your love offering. If you would like any information about the F1 Go giving, you can email treasurer at shilohbc.org. Join us now as we will have a music selection from the music ministry and also the preach word from one of our ministerial staff. I've had questions for tomorrow At times I could not tell the right from wrong But in every situation God gave blessed consolation That my trials come to make me strong Oh, now I have been to many places. I have seen so many faces. There were times I felt so all alone. But in those lonely hours, yes, those blessed lonely hours, Jesus lets me know that I'm his own. And oh, Yes, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. Yes, I've learned to trust in God. No, through it all. Yes, through it all, I've learned to depend upon His word. Now, I thank God for my mountain. And I thank God for my valleys And all the storms I know he's brought me through If I never had a problem I wouldn't know that God could solve them I wouldn't know what faith in God would do And all
Good evening and praise the Lord, everyone. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I want to first give honor to God, who's the head of my life. I want to thank my pastor for this opportunity. And I just bless you, all of my father's children. And now let us bow our heads for a word of prayer and then our scripture, which will be found in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. Let us pray. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for just this opportunity to be in your presence, for just this opportunity to hear a word that would encourage us and strengthen us. Now, oh God, I pray that you would use me for your glory and honor. Speak through me that we all might be blessed. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, amen and amen. Our scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, I will read from the King James Version. But as it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. Our sermon for the evening, the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. The things that God hath prepared for them that love him. And our three points, point number one, wait and see. Point number two, prepare for your increase and overflow. Point number three, you can't beat God's giving no matter how hard you try. Many of us believe this verse is referring to the glories of heaven, which none have seen nor heard. However, here Paul is teaching about the truth of the mystery that have been revealed to those who love the Lord in this dispensation of grace. Let me stop here for a moment and talk a little about this dispensation of grace. A dispensation is simply a set of instructions that God dispenses or gives to man or to a particular section of mankind for them to apply to life during a particular time period. God expects man to obey the particular dispensation he gives to them. In scripture, there are various dispensations and diverse sets of instructions that God has dispensed or given throughout history. The dispensation of grace, or using its full name, the dispensation of the grace of God, is the set of divine instructions that pertains to us. It involves God's current dealings with mankind. Okay, so Paul is talking about the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. They were not seen nor heard in the past, and they never entered into the heart of man because they were hid in God and were never before revealed. But Paul writes in the next verse in 1 Corinthians 2.10, but God hath revealed them to us by his spirit. Now the mystery has been revealed. Now we see and know the things God has prepared for us as members of the body of Christ through the Holy Spirit via illumination. And illumination is the spiritual or intellectual enlightenment to his word. Paul's point here is not the things in heaven God has prepared for us. Rather, it is that God has fully revealed to us his formerly hidden wisdom. 
God has revealed to us our heavenly calling and our blessed hope, which he hath prepared and ordained before the world unto our glory. 1 Corinthians 2, 7, and we can see it, know it, and enjoy it right now. So let's talk about right now, right here, today. Point number one, wait and see. As believers in Christ, we are taught to place our hope in God for the outcome of our lives and our futures and generations to come. No matter what trials and tribulations we face in life, we're encouraged to hold on to our faith and wait patiently for God's deliverance. We see this in Psalm 13. It's a great example of God's deliverance from pain. It says, how long wilt thou forget me, O Lord, forever? How long wilt thou hide thy face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and hear me, O Lord. God, enlighten my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest mine enemies say I have prevailed against him, and those that trouble me rejoice, and I am moved. But I have trusted in the mystery. I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. I will sing unto the Lord, because he has dealt bountifully with me. Much like the author of this passage, David, our circumstances may lead us to question God while we are in the place of wait and see. We say, hey God, what's going on? Sometimes we even wonder where God is. However, when we choose to wait on the Lord, in time we will see that he is right there with us. He will not only keep his promises, but uses all things for our good in this life and in the next. Yes, I know waiting is hard, not knowing God's timing. It's hard not knowing what God's better will look like. This not knowing is what gets to us, and it is truly what tests our faith. How long is God going to work? How long is it going to take for God to work things out this time? Does he see me? Does he know what I'm going through? Paul's words in 1 Corinthians answers this question without actually telling us God's plan. The passage makes it clear in two points. One, he will never tell any other man or woman the full extent of his plan for our lives, nor will you ever really know the full extent of God's plan for your life. But what we do know is... What we have to hold on to is that something good is on the horizon. Something is being worked out for our good and his glory. He is preparing good things for them that love him. And yes, sometimes we just have to wait and see. The phrase, eyes have not seen, denotes that no one can visibly lay eyes on God's plans or his blessings before they occur. This is a literal and metaphorical interpretation. Part of the reason God's ways are mysterious is because he doesn't communicate all of the intricate details of our lives to us. We just can't handle it. He doesn't always tell us step by step how to make a problem go away or how to readily bring about our goals and aspirations. Both take time and sometimes over time we learn in life as we progress. God reveals new information only at his will, in his time, and not in advance. However uncomfortable it feels, however hard it may be, we know that trials are necessary for the building of our faith. If we knew everything outlined for our lives, we wouldn't need to trust God or his plan or his word. Sometimes keeping us in the dark is the best thing to help us to learn to depend on God. In a sermon I preached a while ago, I spoke about what to do in the meantime. 
while we are waiting on God to move, while, while we are watching and waiting, that's the time where we need to be fasting and praying. We need to be studying and meditating on God's word. We need to stop talking about the matter. Stop talking about the issue. Stop complaining about the what ifs, the where are they, when is it coming, and focus on God and his faithfulness. His grace has always been right there with us. He is always an on-time God. Waiting to see God move gives you the time to prepare for your increase in overflow. How many of you want increase in overflow in your life? I don't know about you, but I sure do. And I need to do some things right now to help start the ball rolling, to get ready to receive and prepare what God has prepared for me and for those of you that love him right here and right now. Point number two, prepare for your increase and overflow. The Bible says, let those who wait for the Lord, they will gain new strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not get tired. They will walk and not become weary. Don't be weary while waiting on your increase and overflow. It's in the preparation for your increase and your overflow that all these good things happen. This is where you will grow closer to God. This is where you will get stronger in him. Gain your spiritual endurance. This is where you will bring pleasure to the Lord as you grow in relationship with him. Clearly, we all need these profound times of patiently waiting on God to grow us towards spiritual maturity so that we can receive what God has prepared for us. There is no other way to develop character that reflects Jesus other than to embrace this time and grow in your relationship with God. We have to learn to wholeheartedly trust God in preparing to receive our increase and our overflow. Choose to place your hope in the Lord no matter what. Micah 7 says, but as for me, I will watch in hope for the Lord. I will wait for God, my Savior. My God will hear me. We have to seek the Lord in preparing to receive our increase in overflow. So pursue God, even if it seems like you've been watching and you've been waiting forever. Prepare yourself for the blessings to come, for the increase in your life, for the overflow in your life. You see, sometimes it's easy to become angry or bitter when you are patiently waiting on God. You may even feel he has left you. This is a news flash. His word declares he will never leave us nor forsake us. Worship him despite your circumstances. Believe God is good despite all that you see. Choose to run to God no matter what is happening or how long it takes for him to answer or for him to respond. In fact, this is an opportunity to enter into his presence like never before. God draws us to him when we go through trials. This is how we grow. We have to be watchful and expectant while preparing to receive our increase and overflow. Wait with watchfulness and expectancy for what God has prepared for you, for what God has prepared for those who love him. Fair warning here, he answers prayers in amazing ways, but rarely does he answer them exactly the way we imagine. Trust that his ways are better because he sees the whole picture. He can see what we cannot see. He knows what we can't understand. Sometimes it seems some problems seem to take more time to get answered. There may be strongholds that require a lot of prayer, a lot of fasting, and a lot of waiting. Sometimes it seems that things we have been waiting on will never come, but the promises of God are yea and amen in our lives. Be watchful and expect for God to answer the way he chooses and trust that sometimes a no is best even if you don't understand why. Psalms 5, 3 says, in the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my request before you and wait expectantly. 
You see, we have to be grateful while preparing to receive our increase and overflow. Be grateful for what God has already done, for what he's already given you. Many times we become so hyper-focused on the one issue that we forget to look around and see what God has already done in our lives. Thessalonians 5, starting at verse 16, says, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks for all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. I don't know about you, but I'm preparing to receive my increase in overflow. Like many of you, I have been waiting on a good measure, pressed down, shaken together and overflowing in my life. I believe it's going to come in a big way, not doled out the way man wants to do, like he's doing me a favor by giving me what God has for me. God will bypass that man and bless your life in spite of him. What God has for you, what God has for me, is just for you, and it's just for me, and it's coming. It's on its way. Maybe we're not ready. Maybe we haven't been ready. Maybe we had to learn some lessons. Maybe we had to learn to wait. Maybe we had to get our praise right. Maybe we had to learn to fast and pray. But whatever the delay has been, Look out because your blessings are on the way. The good things that God has prepared for you today, they are on their way. Don't get distracted in preparing for your increase and overflow. Don't let what somebody else says or think get in your way. Don't let what people in authority over you at work or at school, don't let them rain on your parade because what God has for you is just for you. It can't be stolen. It can't be borrowed. It can't be duplicated. Why? Because it's just for you. It's what God has prepared for you and for them that love him. In your season of preparing to receive your increase and overflow, bless God. Bless him in all that you say and do. Bless him in your walk and bless him in your worship. Byron Cage says it like this, I will bless the Lord. When I feel like my strength is gone, I will bless the Lord. With no friend to call my own, I will bless the Lord. When there's no one to call on the phone, I will bless the Lord. I will lift my hands and call his precious name. I will bless the Lord, cause he's always been there. He promised he'd never change. I will bless the Lord. Tears streaming down my face. I'll put on my garment of praise. I will bless the Lord, cause my ways are not his ways. I will bless the Lord on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I will bless the Lord on Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I will bless the Lord all day on Sundays. I will bless the Lord in my sin when I repent and he'll wash them all away. I will bless the Lord because some glad morning when this life is over, I'm going to get my wings. I'm going to get my crown. I'm going to tell the story of how you brought me out just to bring me in. I will bless the Lord. Point number three. You can't beat God's giving, no matter how hard you try. Briefly looking at 2 Samuel 7, verses 7 through, I'm sorry, verses 8 through 17, we pick up the story of David in a conversation between the prophet Nathan and God. David told Nathan that he wanted to build God a house out of gratitude of his heart. And because he did not feel comfortable living in a lavish home while the Ark of the Covenant and the presence of the Lord remained in a tent, the prophet took the word to the Lord and the Lord was pleased. The Lord instructed Nathan to tell David. Now y'all listen carefully to this. The Lord instructed Nathan to tell David, I took you from tending sheep in the pasture and selected you to be the leader of my people Israel. That's elevation. I have been with you wherever you have gone and I have destroyed all your enemies before your eyes. That is protection. 
Now I will make your name as famous as anyone who has ever lived on earth. And I will provide a homeland for my people Israel, planting them in a secure place where they will never be disturbed. That's provision. Evil nations won't oppress you as they have done in the past, starting from the time I appointed judges to rule my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. That's promise. What a tremendous blessing. Those words David had re were reminded, in those words David was reminded of his past and the Lord's pronouncing a blessing over the nation of Israel. All right now, I'm talking about the things that God has prepared for them that love him. If the Lord had not gone any further, what he had already spoken over Israel would have been more than enough. However, the Lord often blesses us beyond imagine, beyond our our wildest imagination, beyond our dreams. He blesses us beyond measure. So the word goes on to say, furthermore, the Lord declares that he will make a house for you, a dynasty of kings. For when you die and are buried with your ancestors, I will raise up one of your descendants, your own offspring, and I will make his kingdom strong. I'm talking now about generational blessings. He is the one who will build a house, a temple for my name, and I will secure his royal throne forever. I will be his father and he will be my son. If he sins, I will correct and discipline him with a rod like any father would do. But my favor will not be taken from him as I took it from Saul, who I removed from your sight. Your house and your kingdom will continue before me all the time and your throne will be secure forever. Nathan went on back to David and told him everything the Lord had said. The things God has prepared for them that love him. Point number three, you can't beat God's giving no matter how hard you try. When you bless God and you're waiting and you're preparing for your increase and overflow, he will always find a way to outbless you. David wanted to build God a house, so God established David's house forever. What David wanted to do would last a few generations, but what God did for him endured from generation to generation. God will do the same for you. He may not give you the same blessings that he gave David, but when your goal is to bless him, you will find that he will surely bless you. And his blessings toward you will be far greater than anything you could ever give him. Our God has a way of blessing us beyond anything we could ever think or imagine. The things God has prepared for them that love him. And in his giving, he's not forgotten about our children. About, he hasn't forgotten about our grandchildren or our great-grandchildren. You see, God, our God, is a God of legacy. The Lord wants to bless you and your children. He wants you to be so blessed that you are able to leave an inheritance for your children's children. Now, that's what I'm talking about. And he wants the inheritance to be far greater than just money. I'm talking about the things that God has prepared for them that love him. Do you love him on today? Do you love him on today? When God looks at you, he sees your seed. When he deals with you, he will be setting up your kids and your grandchildren. When God seeks to eradicate unrighteous behavior in your life, he's looking to do so to change you, but he's also looking to protect your lineage. What God wants to do in our life is much bigger than just us. When God is preparing to do for you and for me, it's much bigger than you and me. What God wants to do to you is about what he wants to do through you for the next generation. So don't fight the process. Get in line with God. Be obedient to his word. Talk to him and let him talk to you. Listen intently for his instruction. Allow the Lord to help stop unrighteous behavior in your generation and start to raise up generations that will please the Lord. 
I'm talking about health and wealth here. I'm talking about spiritual growth and maturity. I'm talking about supernatural manifestations of God's blessings in our lives. Do you want them? I'm talking about in the lives of your children. I'm talking about in the lives of your grandchildren. I'm not just talking about one or two generations. No, uh-uh. I'm talking about a hundred generations of your bloodline that will be blessed, that will know the Lord in the pardon of their sin, that will know the word of God, the power of prayer, and the way of salvation. I'm talking about your lineage that will be blessed because you love the Lord. Y'all better shout. You better shout if you understand what I'm talking about. What I'm saying is boo-boo and juju and little Mike and Joey too, they're all going to be blessed because you love the Lord. Because you took the time to impart spiritual wisdom into their life. I'm talking about what God has prepared for them that love the Lord. Just look around at the mercies of God and the favor and faithfulness of God. You can't beat God's giving no matter how hard you try. And just as sure as you are living and the Lord is in heaven on high, the more you give, the more he gives to you. Just keep on giving because it's really true. You can't beat God's giving no matter how hard you try. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. This is your day. This is the hour of prayer. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ and the pardon of your sin, today is the day to accept him. The word of God said, if we accept the Lord Jesus, confess with our mouth and believe that God raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. Take that time, make that confession. We are living in a sin, sick, and dying world, but guess what? Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Let's bow our heads. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, and we praise you, and we bless you because you are God and God alone, because you sit high and look low, because you know where we are. Even in the secret places, even in the dark places, you are right there. We bless you, O oh God, because we know that in loving you, you have prepared great things for us to experience right here and right now. We know that heaven's glory is full and there's joy and strength forevermore. But right here and right now, we can walk with you and talk with you and experience you on a personal level. If we just accept you as the Lord of our life and confess our sin, you are faithful and just to forgive us, O oh God, and we say thank you. But even right now, O oh God, we're praying for the salvation of the unsaved. We're praying for our children and our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren. We're praying for those generations that we will not live to see, O oh God, but that you already know. And we thank you for moving in their lives. We thank you for what you're preparing for us. We thank you for the increase and overflow in our lives right now. In the mighty and matchless name of of Jesus. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. And may the Lord of God continually speak to you and bless you. Amen and amen. Thank you for joining us tonight. We hope you have been blessed by this powerful message. Apply God's word to your life so it can be a blessing to you, your friends, and your family. And as the scripture says, put your trust in God because he cares for you. Now, you have the opportunity to bless this preacher and this church with your offering. Just go to shilohbc.org forward slash give or send a text to the number on the screen or you can mail your offering into the church or stop by the church to drop it off. Just remember, God loves a cheerful giver. Join us each Sunday for Sunday school and Sunday worship service. Then join us each Wednesday for midweek service and Wednesday night Bible study. Here at Shiloh, we are a Bible preaching, Bible teaching church with a focus on saving souls. Until we meet again, always be blessed.